Pop quiz. What has two thumbs, lives in some of the most extreme environments on Earth, looks like bacteria, and doesn't have any thumbs? This guy. I've briefly mentioned Archaea in previous videos, but today, we're taking a deep dive into the steamy hot springs of Yellowstone, the salty brine of the Dead Sea, and the pink lakes of Australia to take a closer look at some of the most mysterious organisms on planet Earth. Now, if you've never heard of Archaea before, don't worry, all right, you're not alone. In fact, nobody even knew that Archaea existed until they were given the status of domain in 1977. This was thanks to the work of microbiologist Carl Woese, pictured here looking like your grandpa who's very, very proud of you. It's not hyperbole to say that Carl Woese revolutionized the way that we view the Tree of Life. Before Woese came along, life was placed into two separate kingdoms. The eukaryotes, whose cells contained a nucleus, and the prokaryotes, single-celled organisms that lacked a nucleus. During this time, the creatures that we now call archaea were just thought to be another bacteria in the prokaryote kingdom. But Woese wanted to test the relatedness of prokaryotes by looking at their genetic structure instead of just their physical characteristics. He discovered that there was a group of prokaryotes that had more in common genetically with eukaryotes than they did with other prokaryotes. Put simply, archaea look like bacteria, archaea act like bacteria, but archaea are more closely related to you than they are to bacteria. This discovery led to a radical redrawing of the Tree of Life. In place of two kingdoms, there were now three domains. You should know this one by now, say it with me. Bacteria, Archaea, and Eukarya. Boom, taxonomy. So now that we know Archaea exists, it's time to take a look at where they like to hang out. Short answer, everywhere. Just like bacteria, Archaea can be found in every ecosystem on the planet including inside your disgusting human body. The nice thing about Archaea is that there are no known species or strains that cause illness or infection. They just sort of hang out in your digestive tract and chill there because it's cozy. There hasn't been any evidence to suggest that a pathogenic strain of Archaea exists, and researchers seem to think that they just don't exist. So that's like a super polite evolutionary pathway. But just because Archaea are harmless and widespread, doesn't mean that they're not extreme. They might be too small to see without an electron microscope, but they can survive in some of the most extreme environments in the world. You might be asking, Jason, what do you mean by extreme? Well, shut up for a second and I'll tell you. First types of archaea ever discovered weren't the ones living in your backyard or the ones living in tide pools. They were in the hot springs of Yellowstone National Park, living and growing in water that's so hot that it destroys the structure of DNA within most living cells. Organisms that live in conditions considered deadly by most other forms of life are called extremophiles. Extremophiles can be found throughout the three domains of life, but archaea take this bizarre lifestyle to the next level. The archaea found in the hot springs of Yellowstone, like the stunningly beautiful Grand Prismatic Spring in Wyoming, are known as thermophiles, organisms whose optimal temperature for growth is between 60 and 80 degrees Celsius. Some are also hyperthermophiles that prefer temperatures above 80 degrees Celsius. One strain of archaea that was found near a deep sea hydrothermal vent is able to reproduce at 121 degrees Celsius, hotter than any other known organism. But temperature isn't the only environmental condition that archaea get fancy with. There are also acidophiles who grow in acidic water with a pH as low as one, alkalophiles who prefer alkaline water with a pH above nine, endoliths who live inside of rocks, inside of rocks, and halophiles who can only exist in incredibly salty environments like the Dead Sea or the Pink Lakes of Australia. Some archaea even thrive in multiple extremes at once, like thermoacidophiles, who enjoy their homes to be both extremely hot and extremely acidic. Extremophilic archaea literally define the limits of terrestrial life, and they might shine a spotlight into the limits of extraterrestrial life. Many astrobiologists, scientists that study the possibility of life beyond our planet, believe that if we find other organisms in our solar system, they'll probably look and behave very similar to extremophile archaea. So our first alien contact is probably going to look less like this and more like this. Bums me out too. But until we meet those alien archaea, our little blue planet is the only place in the universe where these mysterious and wonderful microbes can be found. Archaea, alongside bacteria, ruled planet Earth for about a billion and a half years. But then, 
Around 2 billion years ago, a new form of life branched off from the Archaea and diversified into some really wacky stuff. Like protists, plants, fungi, animals, and us. We call this group of organisms the Eukarya. And next week, we're going to learn what exactly makes our domain of life so incredibly special and unique. Until then, stay curious, stay connected, and never stop evolving.